Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Tonight I've created a tutorial. Um, I keep getting asked would it be possible for me to run through how I edit my photographs in Lightroom. So tonight what I've done is I've used a couple of photographs that I took at the weekend at the Falls of Monzi. I'll just walk you through how I edit my photos, the steps I take and maybe some hints and tips along the way. So I hope you enjoy it and I'll hand you over to the tutorial. Okay, so let me walk you through how I just do a general edit of my photograph. So this is a photograph I took at the weekend of the Falls of Monzi. And a quick way is select auto and then auto will actually make the adjustments that it thinks is best. So you'll see up in the histogram here that it's the, the image looks underexposed because there's a lot of dark areas within the image. However, what I'll do is I'll leave auto set and then what I can start to do is just refine the adjustments. So what I might want to do is tweak the highlights a bit so that the waterfall is not too dark and not too bright. The top of the image is now a lot brighter than I would want it to be. So what I'll do is I'll select the gradient tool and I'll pull that down just a bit and then I'll reduce the exposure to darken that effect and again what I might want to do is just desaturate a little bit so the greens aren't too vibrant and then select done. So the other thing you'll notice is that the centre of the image is quite dark so what I can do is I can take the circular filter, drag that over and then what I can do is use that, if I just reduce the highlights a bit, that's a wee bit too much. I want to make sure that the waterfall is prominent, but I'll show you a trick with the waterfall. So if I increase the shadows, actually if I pull that down because I want the bottom of that tree to be brighter. And I don't need to touch dehaze, I'll just tweak up clarity just a bit more. Add in a little bit of texture. And I really don't want to do that much more with that part of the image. So I'd mentioned earlier a trick around the waterfall. So what you can do is you can take the circular filter, you can elongate it, and then if you turn it round and reduce the size, what you can then do is overlay the waterfall. So if you want the waterfall to stand out, then what you can do is you can bring down the highlights, but then increase the whites. And then what that does is that lets you see the, the kind of shadow areas that are starting to come through and they're more prominent. What I could do is just tweak the blacks a bit just to make the waterfall stand out a little bit even more. Now I could adjust the white balance um, and warm it up just slightly. So if I go too far, that will let you see what the white balance does from cold to warm. So if I stay within just a degree of warmth in there, because I'm really keen for that to glow as much as possible, I might just tweak the exposure up. That's far too much because the highlights are getting blown out in the waterfall. So that's nice and for me, most of the edits that I would want to be done globally and using the filters are more or less completed. So what I'll do now is I'll just increase sharpening a, a bit. I'll update remove chromatic aberration and then I'll enable the lens correction. What I might want to do is add a vignette. Um, I'll try it and let you see. So you can add a vignette. The only thing with this image is I don't want to add the vignette just now because I'm going to edit this image in Photoshop because as you'll see this tree and this branch of the fallen trees are quite a distraction. So what I'll do is if I go photo, edit in Photoshop and I'll take this into Photoshop because there's, there's still a few distractions around the edges that I want to clear up but I'll show you how I can remove some of these elements non-destructively from the image. 
Okay, so now we have the image in Photoshop. What I'd like to try and do is remove that fallen tree and remove that element of the branch. Now, that's really distracting as well, but I'll look at how we can do a crop to remove that. But first off, if I select the spot healing brush, and if I keep the size of the brush small and just overlap, then we've removed that element. I'll just increase the size of the brush a wee bit more and I'll scroll over this fallen tree and I'm doing this quite quickly just to see how much Photoshop removes and what it leaves behind. That's actually done a really good job. So I'm just going to do a wee tidy up. So if I reduce the size of the brush, there's a little twig lying there. If I remove this little twig, because that's quite a distraction in the image. Um, do I want to remove this twig? Why don't I do it? We're in a tutorial, so why don't I do that anyway? This is not an image I'll be sharing anywhere. So if I, again, now, Sometimes if you do this in small stages, the spot healing brush does a better job if you try and select everything all at once. So there's a couple of wee straggles up here. There we go. So the only other thing now is this element. So there's a wee highlight in the water there. So if I remove that. Right, so what we've got now is quite a clean image. We've got no distractions on the bottom left hand side. But what we do have is this big twig or element of the tree sticking out on the right hand side. So what I'll do is I'll look at how we can crop that out. And if I, I don't want to do a square crop, although the square crop would work quite well. If I look at a five by seven and I change that round, what I can then do is without losing too much of the sky, uh, I can just center the waterfall, not to, to replace that rock out there and there you go we have a cleaned up version of the falls of Monzi albeit when I say cleaned up there's still a lot of twigs and fallen trees and branches everywhere but it's a lot clearer and cleaner than where we started we've not oversaturated the greens we've lifted the shadows so you can see the icicles on the tree and you can see the icicles underneath the tree. And then last but not least, if I want to save that, I'll just do a file, export to JPEG, and then I can save that file. And then I can use that later Second on. Second image for editing, and as you can see, this is really dark. So again, what I'll do is, I'll click on Auto, and just see what Auto does. Um, mm -hmm. So auto has actually drastically reduced the highlights, but it's increased the shadows. So we're losing a lot of contrast and darkness in this image. Now, obviously I don't want to do too much because the area I wanted to focus on was the icicles. And then you've got some small icicles underneath the tree here. However, for me, the waterfall's too bright. So what I'll do is I'll select the circular filter and I'll just turn that round. And then what we can do is a selective edit on the waterfall as much as we possibly can. So if I reduce the highlights just a bit, I'm going to increase the whites just so it's brighter. I'm going to introduce some blacks. Oh, that's far too much. I'm going to introduce the blacks. The problem with going too far with the blacks, it makes the whites blue could just reduce that exposure a bit, maybe increase the contrast just a bit. I'll just tweak the whites. I don't want to add a lot of grain into the folds, but I'll put tweak the texture, just tweak the clarity because that gives us a wee bit extra. And I'll just check the warmth, the exposure. So that's nice there. So if I select done. Now as you'll notice here we've got quite a bad highlight spot. So what I can do is I'll try the circular filter over this area. 
and then what I'll do is I'll go back through and change and reduce the highlights as much as I can. There's still some highlight clippings in there. So if I increase the white, yeah, I'll we'll have to be really careful here or it's going to be really obvious what we've done. So I'll just tweak the exposure just a bit. If I soften, yeah, if I just reduce the dehaze by a small amount, there we go, with the damage limitation, I can fix that in post-processing. So if I now select the spot filter, I can now go over the elements that I want to make brighter. So what I'll do is I'll lift the exposure a bit on the side of this tree. And then that way, what we can do is reveal the detail within the shadows. I'll just highlight the icicles as well. I won't go too far. And there we can start to see how we can bring up the tree. Now again, what I can start to do is up the saturation just to bring up those greens. So if I take the greens too far, everything starts to go blue. So what I'll do is I'll just tweak it enough that the greens are there and that looks nice. So if I select done, I don't need to do any other adjustments because I'm happy with the look and feel of that image. I'll just tweak the sharpening a bit. I'll remove chromatic aberration. I'll tweak the lens profile. And what I'll do is I'll add a little vignette just to pull us into the center of the image. I'll then go photo, edit in Photoshop. And then in Photoshop, I all I really want to do, there's a couple of little branches that are in the way of the waterfall. But what I also want to do is just remove those blown out areas. So if I take the spot heel brush, if I just increase the size again, just go over that area, there we'll start to see how we replace those over highlighted areas. So you'll see up here, there's a little branch just peeking through. I want to get rid of that branch. I'll take this one out. Let's really push the boat out and remove all these wee twigs and branches on the left hand side. And so far, so good. The spot healing brush is doing a fantastic job here. Yeah, so for the purposes of the tutorial, this is a really nice image. Um, I'll do file export as JPEG and I'll save that. And here, saved. That's a really nice image. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful. Um, I hope it gave you some insights and useful tips and how to use some of the filters and the gradient filters within Lightroom and then how you can actually clone things out in Photoshop. So if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you hit the bell notification, it will prompt you the next time I push up a video. So thank you, and here's to the next video.